You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And yes, it is easy to make the Urus the butt of a joke. But the Urus makes a joke of, of, your, of your butt. Your, your butt. What? The Lamborghini Urus. This year, we've driven the best and the sportiest SUVs from the likes of Alfa Romeo, BMW, Mercedes, and yet they all quiver in the presence of this because it is the daddy of the rip-your-face-off-turn-pavement-to-mush super SUVs. But at triple the price, is it triple the car? Because it's not triple the cylinders, triple the power, or triple the size. Triple, 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 triple. Do you ever get that thing when something stops sounding like a word? James. But yeah, totally, I know what you mean. Right? Anyway, let's find out if it commands the price tag of $290,000 Canadian as tested, and if it earns the badge of the bull. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Tide goes in, tide goes out. Can't explain that. Men having nipples. Can't explain that either. Supercar crossover? Well, we're going to try and explain that one. And we'll start with the launch. Oh, that goes some of the way to explaining it. Oh, listen to those downshifts. Now we've been in the GLC 63S recently and the Stelvio Quadrifoglio and the X3M. And the question is, does this really take it up a notch? And the answer is yes. So James was going on earlier about things that you can't explain. Something about the tide going in, the tide going out, and man nipples, and supercar SUVs. Well, you can explain an SUV supercar actually, and you can explain those other things by the way. And you explain it by taking something that looks like this on the outside and then giving it a twin turbo V8 that makes 641 horsepower, a rear biased all wheel drive system and a lightning fast eight speed transmission. And then when you stomp on one of these cars, the rear lights up, the front end lifts and it creates hilarious noises, pops and bangs and tire squeal. That is how you do an SUV supercar. So why is it so violent? Well, because unlike the Huracan that has 446 pound feet of torque, this has 617 thanks to the twin turbos and it's available down low. Do I hunger for a higher red line? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's not like a crazy screaming regular Lambo engine that we're used to, but it makes lots of really cool noises. Oh my god, there's so much drama to that engine. They've taken just a regular formula, a twin turbo V8, Mercedes does that, BMW does that, and they've made it absolutely mad. Only Lambo can do that. So this has air suspension. You can raise and lower the ride height in the different modes, and this has got the off-road package, so it's got all that good stuff. But what the air suspension does more than anything is when you put this in strata mode, the ride is fantastic. It's so smooth. And obviously, when you put it into Corsa, it tightens up and the car stays very, very controlled and flat in the corners. This does not drive like it looks. It drives sportier than it looks. It's similar to the GLC 63. It has no business being as good in the corners as it is. And what an incredible turning circle. I'm sure that's massively in thanks to the fact that the rear wheels can turn three degrees. All right, but obviously you don't buy an Urus because you want to be in a flash Lamborghini or go fast or look cool. You buy it and you add the off-road package because it's not a Wrangler. You're not driving this through town. You're off-roading Lambos. And so I'm going to put it into snow mode. And I've seen there's a big chunk of snow here and I'm going to show how this thing off-roads. Oh, crushed it. You can confidently throw it into a corner despite its higher center of gravity and SUV nature. It just, it stays so flat in a way that the other cars we've driven just don't. 
torque is sublime. Unbelievable. Driving this car is thrilling. And living with it is even better because when you want it to be, it feels like an Audi Q8. Around town in Strada mode, which is the daily living mode, it's easily livable. You can feel bumps through it, but the car does not lose, it doesn't decompose. Now that doesn't sound right. It doesn't lose its composure. If it decomposed, there'd be a few Californians out there that would be quite happy. And yet when you want to play with it, it does come alive. You can throw it into Corsa, which is really only meant for the track. But sport, on the other hand, the dash changes, the sound changes, the throttle response changes, and suddenly you're in a Lambo again. Bye bye Audi, as long as you ignore the steering wheel. The front end turns in very, very well. It's easy to point this thing wherever you want it to go. The steering doesn't have that much feedback, but it's honestly really, really good. Put it this way, not many of these super SUVs I find fun to drive. I find them impressive, and I'm like, wow, I can't believe they made it do this. This one just crosses the border into actual fun to drive on a back road. And the thing is, is it doesn't seem to compromise anywhere. <laughs> Visibility, good. Comfort, good. Power, good. So yes, this is a GLC 63S that's eaten a Stelvio Quadrifoglio, that's eaten some of an Audi Q8, or the other way around, the Q8 eaten all of those. Either way, it's unbelievable. We've had the, we've been spoiled recently. We've driven a Huracan, an R8, you know, absurd cars, a Mazda MX-5. But the thing that's crazy, and especially about the Huracan recently, is with the V10 screaming behind your head, it's sensational. And as good as this is, it doesn't fill me with the, you know, a lot of people ask the cliched question, is it still a Lamborghini? It does not fill me with the same sensations as a Huracan. But as far as SUVs go, it doesn't get better than this. Ooh. So is this a replacement for a mid-engine supercar? No, obviously not. But is it the best SUV that I've ever driven? Yeah, I think it is. Well, that is simply the best SUV we have ever driven. I think it's the best SUV in the world. Maybe the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So this is blue, in, in, the, in the theme of space, yes. this is Blue Astrius. Blue Astrius, yeah. what a cool name. Is that, is that Latin or is that Italian though? Yes. <laughs> okay. It looks great. It, it looks amazing, yeah. I don't think they should have marketed it in yellow. I think this looks perfect. No, because it, it, it tones it down just enough that it becomes good looking as opposed to ridiculous. And, well, and also the yellow lent to the Pontiac Aztec joke way too much on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, can we go right to these wheels? They're 23 inches. 23 inches. $6,700 for the privilege of that. <laughs> and, but they look in proportion because they're hiding the biggest production brakes on the market. I believe you because they're the biggest brakes I have ever seen. And it so comes much, on the Pirelli P0. So much money. As good as this looks though, yeah. we can't forgive it for the crime of fake vents at $300,000. Okay, that is a lot of money. It's as though someone from the VAG group woke up and just went, not enough, <laughs> they're not enough. To uh, be fair though, there aren't that many fake vents on this. There's like that little style bit right there. The front though is, okay, that's fake. And so is that. I admit it could be worse, but like, it's, come on. I, okay, fine. 300 grand, and right, the fine. way it drives, it doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the back end. First of all, this rear wheel has like a really aggressive offset, so it's got like a nice dish to it. Oh, it looks Really, incredible. really like that. Let's talk about the back end though. Okay, in the back, obviously, looks so good. Oh, we got even a carbon fiber license plate. You know what else is carbon fiber, actually? Check this out. It's absurd. How cool is that? It actually doesn't even weigh that much. Well, it's carbon fiber. <laughs> it's so Although cool. there are still fake vents at the back. And we did say in the Huracan video, if you've seen that, you have to spend 400 grand to not get fake vents. And this is under 400 and therefore, therefore it has fake it's vents. okay. That's we it. have a rear lip spoiler. We have a big thick spoiler. We do. Spoilers. And we have a surprisingly large amount of space. Nice. And we've got the Akapovich exhaust, which as we know, yes. sounds phenomenal. Oh, so I, I don't officially know how to pronounce that. 
is it is it Akrapovic or is it Akrapovic? Or I'm just it... going by my Wimbledon jargon. It's just Akrapovic. Akrapovic. Yeah. Okay, fine. Either way, it sounds amazing. And also, it looks really cool. But you know what looks even better? What? The interior of this car. You're right. Let's go check it out. Start it up. So satisfying. <laughs> so cool. It is a crime to put your finger through there. It absolutely is. I did, yes. I did an Instagram story with that. On uh, the uh, Huracan. Yeah, yeah. Pe people were appalled. <laughs> um, this is the reverse. Yeah. And I think it's so cool. It's like, it's similar to the Huracan, but more beefy. Oh, basically. it's just the best feeling to do it. It's kablam! It feels like, what's it, Star Trek, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's for reverse. Hyperdrive, yeah. Here's what I wish, though. I wish, this, I wish this was for drive. So you, like, pull it in. Because in order to put it in drive, you click the first uh, upshift paddle. Yeah. But in this... If it's not fixed column mounted, right? It's not. So, so if you're parking, you're like, how do I? And you, where do I put it in drive? Right? Yes, yes. But and I, I found a silver lining to that, okay. which is if you're full lock, it, the steering wheel is actually in the normal place. Okay, so, okay. so it that's a very, feels... it's a very thin silver lining. Very but, thin. <laughs> but very thin. That's bad. what we do here. Okay. Anyway, let's talk about the rest of the interior. All right, I'm just going to say it. This is the most stunning interior I've ever been in. I think I pretty much agree with you. Right? We've been in S classes, yep. Mybachs. Actually, no, the, the Mybach was pretty good. The Mybach. This feels better because it's got Audi. There's a DNA. lot of Audi. Yes. A lot of Audi, which is a negative, maybe. But is it though? This just means stuff is going to be nice. And in work. some places, <laughs> no. So this has the Bang Olufsen sound system that we had in the A8, and it is astonishingly good. It's I, thousands of dollars. It's $8,000. <laughs> but it's so good after each song. I, I try to give a standing ovation to Elton John on the highway here. <laughs> and uh, suddenly driving very, very fast. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. the pedal was there. That's all right, yeah. But uh, the other Audi stuff where it lets me down slightly is this steering wheel is straight out of Audi. Apart from this with the Italian flag and the metal. And, and obviously the, the airbag is a little bit different. But like, it just looks like an Audi Whereas steering. the Huracan wasn't. This right. stuff from the A8 is yes. next gen, which puts it ahead of things like the Bentayga. Yes. And I, I loved it in the A8. It Obviously, was one of the reasons I chose it. It's amazing because like this has got haptic feedback, right? So everything is really, really easy to use. There's zero lag. This is cutting edge tech in here. Yeah. But the contrast is amazing. Like like the lights and the darks is obviously just premium. It's like an OLED screen. Like it also it. isn't too shabby looking at nighttime. This has a $4,000 ambient light package. Is that worth it though? Four grand? No. Nope. Okay. But we don't ask what we need. It's, it's <laughs> what you want. Okay, this section down here is one of my favorites because it's it's like the control center of yeah, the car. With right? the anima. Anima, yeah. An anima. An, an anima. Um, and then we got the ego over here, right? So just this part right here, I think is one of the coolest designs. I, Lamborghini absolutely crushes making things dramatic. Somehow they've nailed the kind of like sports car feel, and they've yes. gone this. This is like this is like almost like forerunner off-road stuff. Yeah, well, it is the off-road right? stuff. Everything's a big click. Yeah, click. It's very, very satisfying. Right? Although you can't Maybe go backwards, you have to go all the way through to get to each one. Which that is, is really that annoying. is a bit weird. Yes. Ego allows you to customize things, but unfortunately there is no sports exhaust button. So if you want the loud exhaust, yeah. you have to move either this mode or go into sport or course yeah, for exactly. something louder. Which is unfortunate. Which is unfortunate because you want to go around town. And you want to show off. And you want to have yeah. some noise. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, uh, the uh, dash though as well is very Audi. But that's a good thing because it, it is incredibly nice. But it's not as dramatic as the Huracan and the paddle no. shifters as well. They were like big tomahawks in the Huracan. Yeah, yeah. I get, in a way, Lambo's probably sitting there like, okay, how do we make the SUV special without taking away from a Huracan, right? Like, you and don't... they have done that, though. Yeah, I think they have. They absolutely they have. have. These like, seats are incredible. They're soft, not like the Huracan, the which I found way too stiff. The is so nice stitching. This, like, I'm not sure what this is. It's, it's, like it's open wood. pore wood, yeah. It's so nice. It's, it's wonderful. Obviously, huge amounts of headroom and an Alcantara headliner. And the back seats easily, easily fit me. Even, yeah, even though it has the coupe shape. Yep. Because it's it's just a big car. Huge amounts of headroom. And this has the ADAS $8,000 safety package. So you have yes. the 360 and all the safety for parking, despite its size. Because it's quite bulbous and, yeah, and yeah. beefy, and it's hard to know where the edge is. But like, honestly, though, overall, the interior of this car, it, it is worth the money. In fact, it would be easy to argue that the whole car is worth the money. Is it necessary? No. Is it ridiculous? Yes. But if these supercar manufacturers need to make SUVs in order to be able to continue to make their low volume supercars, then, well, Lambo is showing them all how a supercar SUV is done. You know what I like is the why. Like, like why would you get one instead of how? Like... No, no, like, like the whys. Like the whys. Like it's wise to buy one? 
No, James. The whys. The whys. How, how do... Why? Oh, the, the design. Yeah, right, yeah. the why. No, yeah. not in the head. No, that's a why. Oh, my God. No, the why. Subscribe.